Hello, welcome to this video tutorial of, of Vortex Studio, where uh, you're going to learn how to create your first scene. In order to complete this tutorial, make sure that you have Vortex Studio uh, installed as well as the demo scenes package. In the editor, we're going to start by uh, creating a new scene from the new document section uh, in the main menu. The scene that we're going to be creating here is the forklift in a warehouse a lifting object. The first thing we're going to do is uh, from the environment section of the toolbox, we're going to add a terrain from files. In the terrain file property, click browse and look for the demo scenes uh, folder. We're going to look for environment, warehouse, graphics, and we're going to be looking for the warehouse ground graphics gallery. In default material, we're going to change that to ground with a capital G. And we're not going to be doing any mapping strategy here. So click OK. And what that does is uh, it will generate a static ground uh, that provides a collision geometry on which our forklift will be able to be driven. In order to get uh, some lights, we're going to be adding a sky dome. And from the graphics section of the toolbox, we're also going to be adding the adaptive feature which will allow for uh, better visuals and shadows in the scene. Next, we're going to be adding our forklift and other objects in the scene. Um, so to make that easier, let's use the asset browser. You can find the asset browser from uh, the top right of, uh, uh, of the window in the panels uh, menu. You can uh, select or unselect the asset browser here. Yeah. Uh, let's add uh, a favorite or projects and let's look for uh, the demo scenes folder. First, we're going to look for uh, the forklift found in the training folder, uh, a subfolder called tr forklift medium dynamic design, and we're going to be drag and dropping the forklift.vx mechanism. Uh, this drags and drop uh, the mechanism directly on the floor. If it's not positioned correctly, you can always use the move uh, tool in order to adjust its position in the scene. So with this, we can already uh, uh, test what we have in our simulation. Before we can actually drive the forklift, uh, you can actually use the Alt key and click on uh, the forklift and drag and drop it to see that it is interacting with the ground and the wheels are turning. We'll also find our forklift in the Explorer and we can actually uh, expand uh, the forklift mechanism to see, what's, uh, to see what assets um, exist inside of this mechanism. And uh, we'll also see that it has a control interface where we can actually modify uh, the, some of the control values manually. So for instance, we can see that adjusting the steering uh, turns the wheel. We can also adjust the lift and tilt of the forklift. And we can maybe uh, adjust the speed selector as well as the throttle. See that our forklift should be moving forward. Now let's use the move tool in order to um, Put our forklift a bit more on the side to, to give space uh, for additional objects. Yep. Next thing we're going to do is add uh, some crates to the scene. So in uh, the demo scenes folder, we're going to look for something called movable crate. So we're, we're looking for the movable crate mechanism. You can also drag and drop it, uh, maybe next to the forklift. And we can also move, uh, use the move tool in order to uh, position the crates. We're going to be adding uh, other crates to the scene. So instead of uh, drag and dropping another, another one from, uh, from the asset browser, we're going to use the control D or duplicate option. So duplicate in order to create another box. You can also select uh, two boxes at the same time using the control key. Press control D again and duplicate them. We'll see that this has created four uh, movable crates in our Explorer. We can actually select them all 
and perhaps move them around at will. Yeah. Next thing we're going to do is add shelves. So we're going to be looking for shelves, shelving units. Also drag and drop it into the scene. This is a, a big, uh, a big part, so we can perhaps move them around in order to uh, do some things that make a little more sense. That looks good. And we're also going to be adding uh, our warehouse uh, rooftop and walls, which is saved into a mechanism called warehouse uh, warehouse.vx mechanism. Also drag and drop it. And you'll notice that if you drag and drop it, uh, the warehouse walls might not be uh, perfectly aligned with the ground. So what we'll do uh, is from its uh, properties, uh, we're gonna be adjusting its local transform to be zero in each axis. Okay. So the ground and walls were, um, were modeled so that they're both in uh, uh, the reference position of the scene without any transformation. In order to differentiate uh, our you know, warehouse from our other mechanisms, we can rename them. So let's rename our uh, warehouse wall, maybe warehouse. Shelving units, we can also rename them. And we can rename the crates, crate four, three, two, one. I'm using F2 here in order to uh, rename each of those mechanisms. Another useful thing to be better organized when creating a scene like that is uh, to create folders. So from the toolbox, you can search for folder. It's in the basic section and add a folder. So here we can create a folder called uh, mechanism and select all of our mechanisms and drag, drag and drop them into this folder. Okay, create another folder, call it graphics, and select everything related to uh, the graphics into this folder. We decided we might need to uh, reposition some of the things in our scene, so we can perhaps select our forklift and our shelving units here. Whoops. In order to put them someplace where there isn't uh, any collision at the start of the scene. We can test our scene again. And we can uh, also, using the Alt key, maybe play around with uh, with those crates. You can see that uh, they're also simulated and they can collide with uh, with our forklift. Now, if, if you notice that there isn't any friction uh, between the crates and the ground or between the forklift and the, and the ground, uh, that may be because your material table is not uh, well set up. So here uh, from the toolbox, let's search for material table. It has only one parameter, uh, so we have to browse for uh, the material table that we want to use. What we're going to be looking for here uh, in the demo scenes folder, uh, scenario, forklift scene, uh, we'll be able to reuse the, the, the material table of this scene. Now let's close this uh, material table as well as the asset browser, because we have all of the objects that we need in our simulation. Uh, next thing we're going to do is uh, connect a gamepad joystick to uh, the, 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 the forklift controls in order to control it uh, using this, this gamepad. Yep. So from the toolbox, let's look for joystick. This actually connects uh, any X input um, gamepad or joystick that you have on hand. Next, we're going to be adding a connection container. So let's search for connection. It's in the basics uh, section of the toolbox. We'll rename this one uh, forklift controls connection. Uh, when you add a connection container, this opens the uh, connection editor where you're gonna be able to manage your data flow. Okay, you can always go back to the 3D view by uh, using these uh, little tabs here, right? And of course, go back to the connections with the same tabs. Next, select joystick. And we will want to drag and drop uh, the axis Z, axis X, axis Y, 
axis Y rotation and axis Z rotation. Once those are selected, just drag and drop them into the connection container. From the Explorer, look for the forklift mechanism, expand it, click on the control interface. Yep. So let's select all of the inputs of, these, uh, of this interface and drag and drop it into to the same connection container. Now let's make the connection. So axis X will be the tilt. This is the tilt of the blades. Axis Y will be the lift of the blade. Axis Z will be both uh, the throttle and brake. Axis Y rot will be the steering and axis Z rot will be the speed selector. Now let's start the simulation again and test our new setup. So here using the gamepad, you can use the left joystick uh, to control the tilt and height of the blades. You can also um, use the right joystick. Uh, if you push it forward once, it's going to go in forward fast. If you push it forward uh, twice, it's going to be in. Uh, it's going to be going in forward slow mode. Now you can use the left trigger of the joystick to brake, and you can use the right trigger of the joystick to uh, increase the throttle. So with those controls, you can try to lift one of those boxes. I can, we can see here that uh, they weren't they weren't aligned properly. I can maybe try to help it. There we go. And maybe try to lift one of those boxes. Last thing we're going to do here is add an HUD or head-up display for a forklift. Uh, in order to do that, let's add another folder and rename it HUD. In this folder, um, let's look for the HUD section in the toolbox and add a text object. We're going to use Control D to duplicate this text object to time in order to have three components. Okay, these will correspond to um, to the text output VHL in our uh, forklift mechanism. Okay, we can see that uh, these outputs uh, the lever position, engine RPM, as well as vehicle speed. In order to connect those, let's create uh, another connection container. So connection container from the basic section and insert it into our HUD folder. Select uh, the tree text uh, component and look for the text input here. Drag and drop it into our connection container. Uh, select the text outputs uh, VHL from our forklift mechanism. Also select the outputs. And we'll connect each of those outputs to the corresponding text component. For clarity purposes, we can also rename uh, those components to know uh, which are which. So the first one here is our lever position. Second one will be engine RPM. And third one, vehicle speed. Let's also rename the connection container HUD connections. Now if we go back to our 3D view, we'll see that um, our text outputs are kind of stacked up on the bottom right of our screen here, um, which is not what we want. So let's select them and modify their anchor position. Uh, the X and Y values of the anchor position vary between minus one and plus one. So this is relative to the size of our screen. And the screen offset is a pixel value offsetting the HUD object from uh, the anchor position. So for the lever position, let's uh, set its anchor position to 0 0.7 minus 0 0.9. For the engine RPM, it will be 0 0.7 minus 0.82. And vehicle speed, 0 0.7 minus 0.74. We can see it appears, but uh, the text kind of wraps, uh, wraps up, so our, our box is not big enough. So let's fix that. We can select all of uh, the objects and modify the text area length, maybe to 100, and maybe adjust the height a little bit to 20. As you can see, the text appear correctly now.